Good morning and thank you for joining me today. It is great to be with you in 2022. This morning we're going to talk about a difficult subject. It's called living before the face of God. It goes back to our setting New Year's resolutions because that resolution that we set is also a statement that says there is something in life that must change or be done differently. It means that you or I or whoever's making the resolution is dissatisfied with something and therefore we are resolving to do something else at a future point in time. But if we're honest and if we look at statistics, many New Year's resolutions would have already been broken or will be broken in the next week or so. So, how would the awareness that all of 2022 is going to be lived before the face of God affect our making and keeping our New Year's resolutions? Our scripture reading this morning from the New International Version, there's three. First one is Hebrews 4, verse 13 to 16. It reads, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Second reading is Luke 8 verse 17. It's very well known. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. And the final reading is from Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 24. Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. So let's think about those things that typically we're going to make a new, resor- you know, a new Year's resolution about. Overeating. That will be done in the presence of God. Unhealthy things they will be done in the presence of God. Drunkenness, that will be done in the presence of God. Wasting money, it's wasted in the presence of God. What about adultery? Yes, adultery is also committed in the presence of God. Rebellion, that is also committed in the presence of God. And I I think you get where I'm going with this. To live in the presence of God is to understand that whatever we are doing And wherever we are doing it, we are doing it in the sight of God. God is omnipresent, and there's no place so remote that we can escape Him. To be aware of the presence of God is also to be aware of His sovereignty. And to be aware of God's sovereignty is recognizing that there is no higher goal than honoring and bringing glory to God in all that we do. And it is this awareness that simply must reflect in our New Year's resolutions. You see, any resolution that is not God-centered is then centered on someone or something else. So not only will your resolution speak of your priorities, but it's going to speak of your integrity. When a resolution is broken, it is usually, and here I must emphasize usually because there are some things outside of our control, resolutions are usually broken because something was never a priority to keep, but instead something that actually belonged on a wish list of some sort. In which case then the resolution is something to be hoped for instead of worked for. But when a resolution centers on God, It's asking for integrity because it's going to result in a life of wholeness that finds unity and structure within the majesty of God. On the other hand, a fragmented life 
is going to lead to contradictions, conflict, confusion, and chaos. So if you look at your life right now, what do you see? What do you experience? It is true that some Christians actually have two lives, a religious life and a non-religious life. But perhaps before continuing, we can remind ourselves of what religion is, because religion is actually desirable. One definition says that religion is to believe in and worship God. But the definition that I like the most is to order your life according to what you believe. So in a sense, religion is the meeting point of belief and action. And in this light, I don't think that a true Christian, a disciple of Christ, can lead a non-religious life. When we are at work, God is present. When we worship, God is present. When we celebrate, God is present. When we sin, God is present. When we get hurt, God is present. When we cry, God is present. What might be absent is our continuous awareness of the presence of God. So life is going to be lived before the face of God, whether we are aware of His presence or not. Your whole life is open before God. There is no hiding place or something that can be done in secret. God cannot look the other way when we busy ourselves with something that we should not be doing. And although He is looking at us, He is also calling us toward repentance. A Christian's resolution demands integrity because our lives are lived in the presence of God by principle, not convenience, by humility, not defiance, under the guidance of conscious, conscience, ethics, morality, and values that is held captive by the Word of God. And while we're talking about these things, we also need to talk about the concept of time and our resolutions. In other words, waiting for or setting a future date from which we aim to do things differently. Uh, you know, here is the thing. We set a resolution because we are dissatisfied and something must change, but not right now. Therefore, in saying I am dissatisfied and something must change at a future moment, you're also saying, this thing I am dissatisfied with is at the same time acceptable. The truth of the matter, brothers and sisters, is that if something is unacceptable in a life lived in the presence of God, then it must change immediately and not at a future point in time. To say, I just want to do this or, or that and, and then I will change or I will do it differently from next month, it's speaking of priorities because you are going to inevitably first do those things that are most important to you. Human beings work that way. But it's also a call out to maturity at the same time. So we need to take one step back and reflect on the difference that Christ has made in our lives. As Christians, we have been declared righteous in Christ and ours is to grow in Him. This calls for studying the Word and obedience to the Word of God. We desire to do what pleases God because we are grateful for what He has already done. We are redeemed. Our obedience to God is not because we are trying to earn our place in heaven. Our obedience to God is because we love God and we are grateful that Christ did what we could not do. And because of this, we have a place in heaven. So, we've pretty much established that if we're going to make a New Year's resolution, then it should be God-centered and without delay. As a Christian, we should have the single-minded desire to live our lives in the presence of God and with His blessing. Growth and holiness is essential to what it means to live the Christian life. And the Bible describes the Christian life in many ways, for example, Romans 6 verse 14, it makes it clear that grace dominates and fuels Christian living. Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 2 describes the Christian race 
You know, the Christian life is a race, at least. And we're going to finish this race through Christ. In Ephesians 6 verse 12, Paul tells us that to be a Christian is to fight against the spiritual powers of the devil. There's going to be resistance. Expect it. But know that the victory is God's, not yours or mine. Ours is to be found in him. To bring it all together, the reformers came up with a concept to describe this Christian living under which we can incorporate the many ways that scripture des- describes the Christian life. They said that the purpose of the Christian life is to live koram dio, which means before the face of God. This means that we live our lives ever conscious that we do so under God's watchful gaze. We live life before the face of God. So we cannot go into 2022 being half-hearted disciples of Christ. When it comes to following Him, we must be all in. Yes, we will sin and may fail at times and, you know, and fall into periods of spiritual apathy. But we are called to be true disciples of Christ that persevere through these times and press on in full commitment to Christ. So if you want to make a resolution or perhaps you've really failed at making a resolution, don't wait. There's nothing magical about 1 January or any other day. They all belong to God. But if you do decide to make a resolution, let it be God-focused and therefore God-honoring. Let us ask the Lord today to strengthen your and my resolve to follow Him and commit ourselves once more to being His disciple. Heavenly Father, as we start this year, Lord, we we confess we need you. We can't do it without you. I pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will call us to repentance. You will call us to a God-focused, God-honoring life. That is to be lived in 2022 before you. Be with each and every one of us, we pray, Lord. And thanks for bringing us this far. Thank you for 2021. Thank you that you were there. Thank you that we can call upon your name for help. Bless us then. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. See you next week. God bless and bye-bye.